Behind the Shades. How did you get started in doing this and why? Right. So in childhood, I felt as I, as a five-year-old that I was born in the wrong family. Very, very strange. I can tell you exactly where I was five years old. When my thoughts and my feelings came together, I realized I do. This, this is, I'm born in the wrong family. This is really strange. It was very scary. And uh, kind of like approached my life this way what happened is i became observant of people i was sort of i started watching the world trying to understand how is that possible how can you be born in the family with seven people in the house and you completely don't belong there and you're invisible strange anyway so i started watching people then and i watched people in school i was the kid that was quiet in the corner and observing 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 and that kind of tuned in a, a radar of i'm able to pick up energy in people just focusing on them. It's kind of cool. So it's my one of my gifts that developed from that. But I was also always curious. I was a curious mind over that as well. So I started taking personal development classes when I was 23 years old. I never stopped. You know, in the in back in the days, it was weird. You know, my friends like, let's go to the beach. Okay, I'm in a workshop this weekend. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> well, I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to get ahead of my life in every way, financial, personal, right? Life, business, purpose. Anyway, so that was my that's my that's my brain. I'm curious. I want to eat it all up, and I want everything on the flight because I don't know how to do anything because <laughs> apparently I don't even belong here. Interesting. So that's how it started. 2006. I'm in San Jose, California. At the time, I had a, another business that had reached reached the ceiling. That I, with my knowledge, I was at the max. I couldn't. I did not know how to make more money with it. So I went in a business workshop for three days in San Jose, Northern California. Um. But uh, so I met this couple who ended up sitting next to me on the plane flying back, which I thought was random. And I realized that <laughs> nothing is random. I mean, my entire belief system about life and what we attract, and how. Anyway, so on the plane, Mr. Curious, the, the lady says to me, what are you doing next weekend? And I go, I'm free next weekend. I'm not working. She goes, you want to come to a workshop? It's on me. I'm like, of course, yeah, sure, yes, of course, because these could be expensive, these, right? And and that's my brain. You got something to teach, I'll take it. Um, and then I asked what it was about, because <laughs> I agreed before even knowing what it was. And I go, so what's the what's the workshop? She goes, Oh, it's called Understanding Women. Now look at my face. I went a little bit like, oh. Like now, part of the my resistance at that moment, um, I work hard, so the weekends is when I recover. I'll take a workshop to learn some stuff, but if I'm going to spend a weekend in understanding women, I'm going, really? <laughs> Part of it is because I always attracted sweet women. And at the time, I was married with two little kids. Like My wife and I do fantastic. She's an angel. I'm not looking for this. I know how to do this. I've done this my whole life. I have no trouble with women. I don't attract the, the, the wild one. I attract the sweet ones. So, damn. Damn, so now I'm going to spend a week. Okay, so I went in there a little bit backwards. But when I walked into space, it was in a big hotel by the airport in Los Angeles. Uh, I walked in, it was 400 people in the space. And I remember going, oh, wait, this isn't going to be cute. And sure enough, over the period of the, the workshop, I slipped off my chair to the crown like seven times. Maybe eight. I realized in that <laughs> workshop, that I absolutely knew zero about women. nothing. I knew nothing. Do you understand? Like nothing about women. Not, nothing. And the scary part is that means I knew nothing about my wife. We have kids. This is my angel. All my brothers and sisters are divorced three or four times, every one of them. So for my brain, the idea of screwing up my relationship because I didn't know was insane. So that's how it started. I jumped in a company. I took all their workshops. I think they had nine at the time. I took all the curriculum about relationship dynamics, men and women, and all that jazz. I ended up assisting all the, after it, you did all the relationships, you could assist. So I would assist for free entire weekends, just giving my time away to be in the space, to be in the room, to hear it again, to hear it differently. You know what I mean? To integrate, to integrate. I did that for years. And I became a workshop leader for them because I'm a teacher. So it, became, it was kind of a natural skip. And that's how it all started. 
ultimately, I kept, I kept studying with other companies and other people, John Gray, Martin Venus, Shanti Felhan in the South, Esther Perel, New York City, Dr. Pahal in Los Angeles. These are the masters on which I stand, the shoulder I stand on. And it became, so again, I was doing this for us. I was doing this for me. I was doing this for my family. And it exploded. I started helping my friends. I was in my other business and people would like walk into my office and spill their guts and start crying. And I had to shut the door constantly. Like the, the staff knew to not come in when the door was shut because somebody's crying and spilling their life on me. I have this people like, sh- like open up to me. That's always, I don't know how that works, but some kind of energy. I don't know. And that's how it started. So I started helping my friends, my 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 customer at the other business. And then by in 2009, three years in, this 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 tornado, um, I started Project Equinox officially. So I did both business for a while. I was trying to keep the other one as a cash cow. Um, and eventually both kept expanding and I almost died. So the past like the last three years were like I, I was working two full-time jobs all the time, doing workshop with the weekend. And working all week, regular hours and evenings on the week, uh, whatever. So eventually I had to sell, sell my business in order to do this full time. That's how we got me, here. Yeah. yeah, I know for me, because um, I'm in my 30s now, in my 20s, I knew, I realized I knew nothing about women. <laughs> and in my arrogance at times, I thought that I knew 25%. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. We have but a then sense what, of. We have a sense yeah, of. Yeah, you, you have a think. sense of, right? Right. And one thing, and what made me realize that um, is, even though it wasn't a workshop setting like how you had one, mm-hmm. it was just an environment where I was around people that were trying to make it work, or a little bit older, maybe a little bit more seasoned and experienced. Yep. And some of the interaction that they were having, I was trying to understand. Okay, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Why is this happening? And once I began to ask the right questions and once I started to get outside of myself, that's when I realized, okay, there's more to what you can just maybe see in your day to day, because that's very anecdotal, right? Um, what were some of the thoughts that were going through your head when you realized, hey, I don't know anything about women. I need to continue to, as you mentioned, um craft your skill and to get more experiences and to participate further in these workshops it was it was it was it was fear i have two little kids a beautiful wife and i realize i know nothing that is too much for me like that's that this doesn't work for me you know what i mean again it won't be a, it won't be a statistic because i didn't know i'm that guy i'll go find out and so that's that was a drive really and then the two it developed into its own business by default because people kept coming at me like it was kind of you know i hate that word because it's very la but it, it kind of happened organically but i'm very 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 passionate about it you know when i started breaking down what doesn't work you know for what works everything in our culture is keeping this from working it's absolutely ridiculous and what's the new normal is why everybody's struggling in relationships like that's it. So I think my job often is to sound the alarm, wake up, wake up. It's not working, you know. And equality is beautiful and fine, and men and women are equally as important, but we're not the same, right? Because and I transgress that equality is like we're the same. So a man should be more like a woman to be a good man, sweet, sensitive, talkative, vulnerable. No, that's your girlfriend. And men who do this, you don't respect. The weak. Right? They don't have any mojo. They can't make you feel safe. It doesn't work. Right? And men, women should be more like men to be to be good women in our culture. Strong, independent, strong, independent, powerful. Okay, it works for business, except it, it, when you don't turn it off, because nobody turns it off because it becomes a a, a, a way of operating and op, you know constantly. Men, masculine men, do not are not interested in strong, independent, powerful women. They don't just, they're not interested in women's careers and their money. It's irrelevant to a man who has his own. That's not what men are attracted to women, right? So, but everybody's t- teaching women, go girl, bat, you know, boss babe, badass, you know. A girl summer. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then, and then understand. So it's interesting because they, and then all of my clients, so like these ladies who are doing that, which is great. They have their own car, money, blah, 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 blah. It's fantastic, good for you. But, and they go, how come nobody's dating me? You know, I, I can't get a date. Nobody cares. I'm still young. I'm pretty. I have everything. 
I'm no trouble. Nobody is dating me. I'm like, I know. You're too masculine. And the masculine men aren't interested in that. You're inside out. You act like a dude, you know, because masculine women tend to be aggressive, disagreeable, not cooperative, lean in, push, you know, opinionated, all this stuff that on some of them, and I hate to say this, and it's going to trigger people, but like, you know, the worst quality of men become how women act in their masculine. So real men aren't interested in that. Men are attracted to feminine, soft, warm, kind energy. Masculine men want women who wish to, they could, you know, relax, be at peace, harmony, right? They, they don't want stress. They don't want trauma. They don't want argument. They don't want competitive energy. They don't want you to lean on them. They don't want to be mothered, right? So, so everything that we make women proud of, they throw in relationship paradigm and it, it, it goes nowhere. And women are, in my world, like they're, they're hurt. They're hurt. I don't understand what's wrong with me. I'm like, you over-calibrated. You've been raised to believe in stuff that doesn't work for love. So you, you can be strong and independent. But in a relationship, if you lead with that, men just walk away. It's more so than that, men don't even say hi to you. Like That energy is so off-putting to masculine men. They don't even, they literally just like get away from you. They get away from you. They get away from you. you don't, they don't even say hi. You don't even meet them. What you do attract is what I call boys. The men who are feminist, the men who like 50-50 because they don't want to pay for nothing, right? The men who are soft and sensitive like you want to be, except they don't ever make you feel safe. They don't step up. They don't want to take care of you. They don't want to marry you. They don't want to take care of your kids. They don't want to have children. They want any responsibilities. They want to play. They want to play you. They want to play. They want you to give them money. They want you to keep them comfortable, right? They, 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 they be, they're the girl. Like I so said, they want you to be the man, whether the girl, you know, and uh, go girl and get that career and that, you know, that, that, that promotion. You, I'm so proud of you, babe. Well, he's on the couch smoking the joints, putting the dog, you know, and writing his music. Like, fuck that. Sorry, but that's bullshit. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.